Welcome to the August 22nd meeting of the Avon Board of Education. It is now 7.01, so we're slightly behind schedule. So why don't we start off with the first item being the Pledge of Allegiance. And I don't know whose turn it is. Mrs. Rell, let's start with you. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, I would propose a modification for the agenda. Uh, one is to go over the open houses for each school to make sure that we have Board of Ed coverage at each. Uh, two, there is a um, uh, packet in front of you regarding the replacement of faculty laptops that has just come in, and I would propose that we add both of those to the agenda. Is there any objection? So why don't we say that carries unanimously. The next item of business is introducing our interim superintendent, Jean Ann Pattyfoot, and I go so the camera can capture you. Okay. And uh, welcome, we're looking forward to you. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to working with you, and we're, we're very pleased that you've decided to join us. Is there anything you'd like to say to uh, the assembled multitude or the television <laughs> audience? Well, I'm very happy to be here, and I've already jumped right in the deep end with my uh, two feet. Uh, Mr. Mala has been very helpful, and the transition is going very well. So thank you all very, very much. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right, and at that point, I'd like to thank Gary. Uh, Gary, you're moving on to bigger and better things, but you spent the past six years with uh, us or our predecessors, and I want to thank you for putting up with us with style and grace and for helping the system as much as you have. Gary said he did not want a memento, and uh, I therefore cheated a little bit by thanking him in public. Can I have a motion to approve the uh, minutes? So moved. All right. Mrs. Shoot moved. Who seconded? Second. Yeah. Mrs. Blaya, I'm, I'm willing to. Peggy's first. Oh, Peggy's first. All right. Um, Mrs. Rell seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries unanimously. Communications from the public. Does anyone wish to communicate with us? Going once, going twice. No communications from the public. Um, next item is information and proposals, sub A. Um, our consultant, Joseph Arardi, I believe he's in the audience, is going to tell us uh, what is involved and what our timeline is. Welcome, thank you for helping us on this search. <coughs> Chairman, thank you. You just should be in the middle, Joe. It may not illuminate, maybe the one that has the burned out light, so you'll have to. Thank you. I'm hoping it's on. Uh, first, Mr. Mal, congratulations and, and best of luck to you. There's an irony to this meeting because when Mr. Mal left his former district, I was at his last meeting. And I was there because my assistant superintendent was a successor. So it's very so wherever you go, I'm I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Pettiford, congratulations you. to you. Whenever there's three superintendents in the same room, I would suggest air conditioning in a minute or sooner. <laughs> um, I know that through the chair, the proposed timeline to uh, the school board in regards to the search for the superintendent. I have additional copies, so in case you didn't copy it. Before I speak to the timeline, let me first thank the, the Board of Education for the opportunity. I look forward to it, and I am absolutely certain that Avon is a destination district for school superintendents, um, and that you'll be very pleased uh, when you take action in five or six months for your new superintendent of schools. My suggestion in the proposal would be that we launch on September 1. There's no magic to that date, but on September 1, 
through October 31st that we have an open, open application period. I would run advertisement, recruitment, and I would begin to screen candidates during that two-month period. The, the rationale for the window really is predicated around the November election. My takeaway from our initial meeting was that the interplay between the present board and the newly elected board should be in partnership with the appointment of the new superintendent. So if you play that backwards, with election day being November 7th, I'd like to be back to you um, at your meeting on the 21st and talk to you about your profile and talk to you um, about the rationale and finalize where we're going with our six finalists. In the interim, I think it's awfully important for community engagement and community involvement. Um, I'll work through your central office point person, which has been designated by Mr. Mullen. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we'll have informational sessions with central office staff, with your leadership team. I'd like to attend every faculty meeting at least once and have the conversation. I'd like to attend an individual PTA meeting at every school at least once. I think it's really important to have a community forum for your community voice to have the opportunity to share what they believe is the, the, the characters and the attributes for your next school leader. And I'd like to offer also just an open drop-in for, for an hour on two evenings. So for folks who can't make any of the above, their voice is still there and an opportunity to be a player to them. I'm hoping that if this works for you, that you can pencil in November 27th and November 28th and December 2nd on your calendars. 27 and 28 would be the interviews, three interviews per evening. And if you could hold 6 to 10 p.m., that would be terrific. And the finalists coming back to you on Saturday morning. The, the lineup on the timeline would put you in a position with your new school board for appointment either before the holiday break or immediately thereafter. And I'll end where I started that I am absolutely certain and I am confident that you will have a rich pool of applicants and that when you look to a point that you will be pleased with your next school superintendent. I'd love to answer questions if you have them at this point. Mrs. Rell. Is there any thought of doing an online survey or something for people who can't make it to meetings to be able to um, share their thoughts? If that's the consensus of the board, be more than willing to do that. Okay. Um, anyone have any preference on that point? Oh. So right, why, don't, why don't we discuss that as a possibility? Mrs. Blaine? I have a second question. Sure, go ahead. That, although I think that's something we should definitely consider. <clears throat> I just want to make sure I understand. So our role, we really wouldn't be playing any role until you present us the um, November 21st when you present us. Um, you're going to be screening the candidates and you're going to present us the 6th on the 21st. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? This is Young. I would concur that I think an online survey monkey type of um, methodology can be helpful in this process. So okay. Anything else? Mrs. Zeroli? So in terms of the um, community forum, do you think it's helpful for board members to be present or to stay away? I would suggest that if it's an open evening on a board member's calendar to be present um, and to, to be quiet. Got it. I know with boards that I've worked with that the present is easy, the quiet sometimes is difficult. Um, but it's really, a, it's your opportunity to listen because yeah. you certainly will have a number of opportunities to share your thoughts. I think, I was thinking from the perspective of listening to soak it in for the profile. Exactly. But not, yes. We have opportunities to speak, so no need there. Anything else? I have one here. Yes. All right. Mr. Monaco. Would there be any benefit, Joe, to setting up the search committee right now and then finalizing it in November when we have the new members? Well, what should take place, and you've got a month to do it, a month and a half to do it, actually, is that you'll take action as the board at large becomes the search committee. 
And then what you'll do after the November 7th election, your next meeting, you will expand that to include your newly elected school board members. Uh, and that's exactly, Jason, you're, you're absolutely correct. Okay. So when will we establish ourselves as the initial committee? You can do that at your next meeting. The next meeting. Yeah. Is that the reason we can't do it tonight? You can do it tonight. We can, we can do it whenever you'd like. Actually, my unless there's a reason to establish the committee before the uh, election, I don't see any reason to do it until at the election, after the election. Because we're, we're not going to know who the, we've got three people retiring. So we know that they're not going to be on the board uh, in January. But I think it makes sense to have the new and the old together. So it would be a board of, a selection committee of 12, uh, at least 12. Um, you just said we could name the board now, name the committee now, and then just add in November. If you'd like to do that, I'd be happy to entertain a motion to that effect. Uh, um, I, would, I would definitely want, I would rather do it tonight, <clears throat> because I don't know what's going to pop up between now and then. Aren't there certain benefits to us being, you know, taking that step? What does that provide us? Does it provide that we, can we then um, meet without having to have what is the benefit of, of, do, of creating a, making the board a... It, it allows you to have a non-meeting. Right. I'll make the motion to name the, the board at large as the uh, search committee for the new superintendent, you know, allowing us to add a future member to that committee. Right. Second. I would second that. All right. Any discussion on that point? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously. All right. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Do we need to vote on the adding the online survey, or do we, how did you want to handle that? I think I just say, well, if you if you want something as formal as a vote, be happy to do a vote. But it, I, I consider it done. I think it's, no, it's, it's not going to be that hard. And no. it's done. You, you, yes. I won't kick the open door. Can I just ask one other question? Will we be getting um, kind of like a calendar of when all of these events will be happening, the one through six, so that we can be aware sure. of Sure. Um, what will happen is that I was waiting just for the contract to be signed between the school board and, and my work. Um, the design would be to work through Dr. Patterfoot. There's a designated staff member through uh, Mr. Mala's direction that I'll work through. Um, and I'll look to create dates for all of the activities as quickly as possible. And I'll continue to work through Dr. Patterfoot and the, uh, Mr. Lowry as the chair and get the dates to you as quickly as I have them. And I believe, at least I think I heard that you have a, a format of, of an adopt a school in Avon, that the board members that are connected to particular schools. Not really. Okay. What, what we do and, um, is, is there are open houses at the various schools. Uh, and what we try to do is make sure we have at least board, one board member at each. Okay. Would it be helpful in your work if we go through that now? Um, what I believe would be helpful um, is that when I send the dates to you, particularly around the forum dates, uh, the PTA dates, and the open hour dates, that if there are board members who are, are able to or wanting or willing to attend, I think it adds to the presence and the conversation uh, to the community members that are in attendance. So I'll get them to you as quickly as I can. Okay. Um, and then perhaps you can divide them out um, or parcel them out as you see fit. Excellent. Further questions? Hey, Mr. Spivak. Um, once you are opening the process to the application, I just request that you can update us at some point whenever you deem appropriate on the number of applications we sure. received, you know, in state, out of state, just so we have some idea of what's coming in. Sure. What, what I'd like to be able to do, if it works through the chair, is to at, at least be a reoccurring agenda item, if need be, for your meetings once a month going forward through, through November. And I think that's the best way to keep everybody informed of where we are with the process. That's fine. Great. All right. Anything else that we need to do? So are, are you planning on staying through the evening, or are you are going to leave after this? Well, you know, it's refreshing to be on this side of the table. <laughs> so I'll stay a while, um, and I'll, I'll listen to my, my colleagues and friends share their opening reports, <laughs> and, and then we'll see what happens from there. 
All right, excellent. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Revise civics curriculum. You see, we're already up on the screen. As you may recall, we were slated to do the civics um, curriculum revisions in June, and Betsy wasn't able to join us, so I thank you for transferring it to this evening so that Betsy Sanborn, our Department Coordinator for Social Studies, could be present here this evening and share the great work that she and her um, department colleagues have done. When we look at the primary goals of the civics curriculum revisions, um, <coughs> once again, it was a way to uh, line with the curriculum with our state standards. We created documents that provide the clarity, detail, and accountability and ensure the rigor and relevance for all of our students. As shared in previous presentations, the standards versus the curriculum are the same, so I'm not going to go through these again because we did them in June when we did the wellness, but just as a quick refresher to you, these are the curriculum pieces that we had discussed previously. This slide is a quick review of how we use the state standards, which is the same that we have used for every content um, that we have done to date. Again, I'm not going to go through them all, because you probably could do the presentation for me at this point, because we've done a number of curriculums, but just to get you thinking um, as we have done previously. The design model we have used for all of the curriculum areas um, to date is the same one that we used when we updated our civics course. So, so, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, in terms of our standards, we align with the state, and at this point I'm going to turn it over to Betsy to talk about that alignment and how we have gone ahead and developed our civics course for the upcoming school year. So, as with the previous points, I think you're somewhat familiar or have been introduced with um, the Connecticut Social Studies frameworks that were used um, when I introduced the full scope and sequence um, when we did our sort of big revision. Um, before actually getting into the individual courses. Um, so the inquiry standards, this shift from the student becoming sort of a more active learner um, that you see on the slide here are um, really the, the core of what we use to develop the units for the new civics um, content. Um, so particularly for the civics uh, courses, um, two of our goals in general um, courses uh, approach history through a more global perspective. Um, there's a little history, obviously, in civics, but in thinking about diplomacy and foreign affairs, um, we're looking uh, from a more global perspective as we prepare kids for a more global uh, economy. Um, and we also aimed to include courses that um, included more modern uh, history and current events. Um, so the civics course is actually um, starting to look at um, some of the other uh, electives that we have, like the current issues course, as well as the law seminar, and really, um, you know, push to um, work, um, you know, with them, but not stepping on each other's toes. So, uh, including a lot of the current events, obviously important for a civics course. Um, so, when we looked at how to design this course, um, there were four suggested models from the state. One was a constitutional approach, one was a um, historical approach, one was uh, the more traditional legislative, executive, judicial branch uh, approach. Um, and we kind of took different pieces of it and made it our own sort of more thematic approach um, that we thought would gauge um, student interest and, um, you know, really be more interesting for them. <coughs> So um, one of the major shifts to the overall 712 scope and sequence that was mentioned um, in meetings back um, is that we moved that human rights senior course, sort of embedded that content into the uh, sophomore uh, world history course. Um, about 10 plus years ago when civics became a state requirement, a lot of districts, at least that I'm, I'm familiar with, or were kind of, you know, uh, confused or stuck on how to sort of fit that in um, 
it currently lived at the end of 10th grade, which was sort of disconnected. It was like half a year of world history, and then as soon as you know midterm exams were done, it was, hello, same class, now we're starting civics. Um, so we stretched that sophomore course to be you know, a, a full year of world history um, and pushed civics to grade 12. Um, it is a half year course. It is a senior um, course graduation requirement um, and is not going to be taught like the uh, current human rights course. Um, it is um, a more traditional, um, you know, normal class size uh, leveled course. So in terms of next steps, obviously with all curriculum, it's a living and breathing document, so we'll continue to fine tune the lessons as we roll them out and the assessments, and we will ask that it be placed on the next board agenda for approval. So at this point, we'll entertain any questions you might have. You received the packet with the um, stage ones for the June meeting. If anybody has any questions? Any questions? Mr. Shute. Will you be starting this like next week? We will. <laughs> we just have our we just got our textbooks that are all right outside of my office. So will you have a session in the fall and then another session in the spring? We will. Well if you're gonna start it next yes, week, sir. would you like <laughs> approval now? You could approve it, that would be well, great. We have read it for June. Yeah. Right. So. It was on June, so it would yeah. be approved in a timely manner, but normally we have given a month for yes, but we read it. Yeah. But we read it, yeah. Any? All right. Mrs. Realm Roofs, Mr. Burke seconds. Uh, any further comments? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess that I know, passed sorry. unanimously. <laughs> is it, that's it? Thank you. <laughs> All right. If anyone believes otherwise, now is the time to speak. That was very quick. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Betsy, and to all your colleagues for your work. Yes. There you go. So we're now teaching an approved curriculum next week. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Financial report. Mrs. Mershaw. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. Um, so again, I'm really pleased in the financial health of the district as we ended our 16-17 fiscal year. You'll find it on page 22, I believe. Um, just to kind of recap the last two years so that you can see sort of a trend here, which is a positive trend. Um, two years ago now, ending 15-16, uh, we had an encumbrance, an open encumbrance listing of $537,000. And this year, we have an open encumbrance listing of $592,000. It would have been less than last year's had we not put on the telephone system, which was about 108,000. So, I mean, that's amazing, that's great. That means we were right on top of our purchase orders. Um, and on top of that, yes, my estimates were off a bit, I'm sorry, we're closing the year out with $32,000 of unliquidated funds after we finished with the open purchase orders that were remaining and invoices that came in. But not a bad year, so again, positive. Excellent. Thank you. Questions for Mrs. Mashaw? All right. A variance of 0.00058%. Not bad. Although we <laughs> want to make sure that we never slide over to that negative in it's light of right our side. personal life. It's on the right side. It's on the right side. Okay. Correct. Mr. Chairman, I just have a technical question. Are you going to entertain the document that Heather has requested to be put on the agenda now um, or I later? I was going to do it at the end of new okay. business. If you'd like to do it now, I'd be happy no, to. No, I'm just curious. Okay. I have it on the end of new business. Thank you. All right. Consent calendar. Does anyone want to pull anything from the consent calendar? All right. Can I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion to approve. Mrs. Blaya moves. Who seconds? Second. Mr. Burke seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries unanimously. All right, new business, the first group of new business are first reads of policies, which looks like that's A through S. And Mrs. Aroli, we usually have you carry that ball. And there's a microphone. <laughs> what, do you have to, what page do you want to start on? Uh, I noted, well, I went through and paginated myself, 100 to 123. Thank you. 
um, are all the new ones. There was nothing that we were doing that was significant. It was really avonizing, you know, standard language, anything we've changed. Um, it was really interesting meeting because we had several teachers uh, attend. They were bored. It was a summer night and they wanted to join the policy meeting. Who would have thunk it? But it was, it was fun to have them there. And um, they asked some questions and it was nice. It was nice to have someone um, curious. So, um, but there was nothing that was significantly changed on these policies. But I would greatly appreciate it if y'all would take a look and let uh, myself know or, or anyone on the policy committee um, if you have any questions, that would be great. All right, excellent, thank you. Uh, next item added to the agenda is we've got open houses. Uh, and I just want to make sure that we have people who want to cover all of them because it would be nice to have a board member for everything. Let me just run through the list. Um, September 5 is Thompson Brook grade 5. September 6 is Thompson Brook grade 6. Uh, September 7 is Pine Grove and Roaring Brook because you can do it on the same night because clearly no one has students to go to both schools because they're divided up in the district. September 13 is grade 7 for the middle school. September 14 is grade 8 for the middle school. And September 28th is the high school. So why don't I call them out and if you can tell me if you would be interested in attending, that's probably not an efficient way of doing it, but it's about as efficient as I can figure out. Uh, on September 5, who would like to go to the Thompson Brook event? Can I just ask? Sure. So having done it last year, I, obviously the bulk of the activity and conversation is when they're coming in and when they're leaving. So as a parent of students in two schools, should I take myself off of the nights that I would be there as a parent, or can I double duty that? As far as I'm concerned, you can double duty. Then I can certainly take um, the Thompson Brook 6, and I can be at the high school. Okay. All right. How many do you need for each? I mean, what is your hope? It's best to have at least two. I think two would be good. Um, if you, if we, if we don't, well, that's that's fine. Uh, who else? Would, anyone else have a preference for anything? Mrs. Blair, would you? Do you want to do the high school? You don't have to. I just. So I think that we. I'm going to be there too. So. All right. And now it's going to volunteer for Warren Brook. All right. Okay. So, can you repeat the dates again, Houston, for the middle school? Um, middle school is the 13th and the 14th for grades 7 and 8, respectively. I can do so, either one of those. Which one would you like? Or you can have both, as far as I'm concerned. Would anybody else? I'll do both with you. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Now, obviously, if anyone else wants to come, this is intended to be... A, a minimum and not a maximum. So uh, the goal is to have two board of ed members at each. So we need one more person for Roaring Brook, two people for Pine Grove, one person for Thompson Brook grade six, and two people for Thompson Brook grade five. What day is the Pine Grove? And Pine Grove is September 7th. So Thursday? Uh, now you're asking me a yeah, different I, question. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be there. Uh, so I'll do, I'll do Pine Grove. Yeah. Okay. I think you can do it at the beginning because you're just kind of meeting and greeting and then you can go to the class. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm going to be there as a parent, so put me down yeah, for that. That's a little hard. For Pine that's Grove? what I thought, too. It seems difficult to try to do both, isn't it? Yes, it is hard. That's my wife trying to appreciate can. it. <laughs> <laughs> she does not like it when I try to double dip. Well, however you would like to do it. I'm, I'll, I'll attend that one. I can help. All right. Um, we're done with the high school. We've got Shoot Spivak Blea. All right, we're all set. Uh, we two for Thompson Brook, grade five. And thank you. We won't. There. That's yes. On the That's on the fifth. I'll do that too. All right. Uh, and why don't I take that? So we'll say Lowry and Spivak will handle that. Now, what about the sixth, Houston? Is that just Deb right now? Uh, right right now, it's just Deb. So then, add me with, there with her. Okay. And add me as a backup because I'm kidless. <laughs> yes, did I say that? You did. I'm kidless. <laughs> you did. And, and, and you, it seems to tickle your funny bone. It does. So I'd be happy. All right. 
Lovely. So that, that gives a layout. I will make sure that uh, uh, the interim superintendent gets a copy of the list and we're good to go and I will try and show up at a few myself. All right. So then the next item on the agenda is the faculty laptop computer replacements. This is Mashad. I think that's yours. In the spirit of trying to move this along because they are um, in need here at the high school, uh, I don't know if the board members are aware, the high school is the only building where the faculty was provided a laptop and only a laptop. So that is their primary workstation and it's really important that we maintain those workstations to the utmost of our ability. Let me just clarify that that's what they requested. You may remember a number of years ago and we uh, and, uh, infuse technology into the district we gave them the opportunity to choose okay Sorry. does anyone have a question on the proposal it's a uh, four-year lease basically roughly and mrs. Rashad will probably jump on me a teens slightly less than forty thousand dollars a year you probably prefer to use the accurate number, which is right there. Okay. The only question I would have is, is this very different from what we've been doing? Is it no. kind of more of the same, right? We're we've, we established this system six years ago, actually five years ago. And what happens is we have four rolling leases that we pay on. So for a payment of $39,000, we are securing in excess of $300,000 worth of equipment. On year four, you make the last payment, it falls off. In every budget, we put a new one on. So we continue to have four. If that system is allowed to stay in place, it will literally guarantee that uh, the students served in our schools will always have the most current technology available to them. And at a very reasonable uh, budget line item expense. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we are moving. I don't know who did, who did the second. Who did the second? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Any opposite? Any uh, abstentions? No abstentions. All right. Carries unanimously. All right. Chair, uh, sorry, old business. There is no old business. Chairs, ruminations. Uh, let me just say um, I'd originally thought to. Uh, ruminate a little bit on the uh, Hanover report and decided not to after conversations with administration because they wanted to be able to come back with a plan to address with what might be the conclusions of the report that were received in late July. So they really hasn't had a chance to respond to them. So it was originally put here to generally discuss uh, but the administration has requested the ability to come back with an action plan and they just couldn't do it quite as fast. Uh, superintendent's update. Thank you, oh, yes. One thing. Sure. I submitted a number of questions this afternoon. I apologize not sooner. I was away last week. Um, several of my questions were regarding the Hanover Research Report. And my purpose and intent, as I stated in the questions I sent, was to make sure that it was helpful in terms of guiding um, the research, you know, how, how it's analyzed and what recommendations are done, just some of the questions that I have and would like to see answers to. And some of them should be directed to Hanover if they're not clear in the comments because mm -hmm. overall what I saw was a lack of <clears throat> clarity as to what they were getting at. Um, sounded helpful, could be helpful, but unless if you understand like what was a need, what was a resource lacking, what was a, you know, those kinds of things, it didn't make, it, 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 I didn't walk away saying, yep, I get it. Um, so you'll, my questions were sent to, like I said, 1.30 today. Um, look at them. I didn't say I needed an answer right away. Other than the data supplement that's referred to on page 7 uh, was not given to us, so I would like to see that. Right. Uh, I'll respond, um, Mrs. Early. Uh, tomorrow, I have questions after going through the report three times. Yeah. Uh, I did notice that you did not get the end pages because you need a magnifying glass to actually see them. They're that small. 
in font. I am looking at my calendar at 2 p.m. tomorrow. I have a conference call with the Hanover Research Group, and I'm going to ask a number of those questions, some of which were included in your communication and are consistent with what, you know, I, I, need, I just need further explanation. So as I get that, then we certainly have our principles in motion to include um, some of the, uh, what I'm going to say, recommendations uh, included in their plans for improvement in the building. Uh, but I'll have more clarity tomorrow with respect to uh, specific questions. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, Mrs. Young? So I do understand that there needs to be more time to analyze the entire report. Um, but we did get a summary on July 21st, mm -hmm. and some of the comments in it are not very different from what we've already read in the most recent NEASP report and in the state um, administered school climate report that has to be filled out each year. So I am concerned that on the first day of school, we've got a, a, a fantastic new leader at the helm of our flagship school. I'm so excited um, about that, um, but I want to make sure as one member of nine of this board that we've got enough student support positions in place to support our students. And that I am concerned that the longer the response is that we wait for this, um, that there will be students who are, whose needs are not being met. OK. Um, at, at the moment, the, your, your comments are noted, but at the moment we don't have a uh, uh, a focus so we can tell exactly what the issue is. So, um, but your comments are noted. I, this is Blaine. Just to add on, you know, I just want to be support Laura's comments and, and Kathy's what she mentioned. I, I think it just speaks to the um, how seriously the board takes those comments and you know those results and how much we want to really uh, learn about what is the best way to kind of. Um, fill in gaps or, or how we can be of support to the administration as they, you know, look at that report and kind of un untease what it really says in there. Um, that's just, that's all I want to add. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess I ruminated without it being on the agenda. Uh, superintendent's update, uh, we have your name next to it, Mr. Mala. Yes, thank you. Uh, appreciate, I've appreciated the opportunity to serve the community. Uh, um, for the past six and a half years. I've been together with you in uh, posted meetings uh, totaling 102, uh, to be exact. Those and, include and the budget workshop. So We regret that your nameplate isn't here tonight. I know. Did you notice how ironic that was? <laughs> that the only person who doesn't have a nameplate is the guy you're kicking out. No. Uh, but that's okay. I, I, it doesn't mean anything. I, I do want to take a moment... Um, to uh, thank the members of the board who helped myself and my family through a very difficult period. Uh, I am eternally grateful for the uh, support during that time. Uh, and, and you know, those of you that know what I'm talking about understand my comment. Um, so it's my pleasure to give my final report to you. Uh, as agreed last month, given the fact that you don't really vote on personnel items, we moved it uh, under the superintendent's report. We have on page 127, and then some uh, following pages, um, uh, but primarily 127 lists all the activity um, in staff, uh, uh, new hires, resignations, uh, terminations, and retirements. Uh, and the enrollment report, uh, not to be surprised, uh, our enrollment uh, continues to grow as we're sitting here. I do know that we had a number of students register today. They're not reflected here. I just want to um, make the board aware and, and my colleague, uh, Jean Ann, and uh, colleagues, all of my colleagues here, um, to notice where those uh, class size averages are. Uh, bear in mind, we do have contractual caps um, uh, on certain grade levels. I think that uh, we saw more students enroll than uh, we thought. Uh, so, uh, but that's a good thing. Uh, that's always a good sign that people want to be here. Uh, 
to access the quality service. And I have no uh, communication other than uh, what I've included in the packet, so it's been a pleasure uh, providing my last report to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mala. I just have a question. I was intrigued by one of the positions for new hires, homebound tutor. I don't know if that's more of a Kim question. Is that someone, if a student is ill, that you would go to, to <clears throat> teach them, or is that in excess of the school day if they needed additional support? Kim, you want to go ahead? Are we talking, can you just answer uh, that question again? Just homebound course. tutor. Yeah, I was homebound just curious tutor. about the position homebound tutor. I wasn't aware that we had someone designated for that, so I'm just curious, does that mean if someone is ill, they go to try to fill in the gaps, or is it in addition to the school day? All right. Um, we do both, what you're describing, but the one that's on here is actually for a specific student. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Russick, okay. staff orientation. Yesterday we um, welcomed our new staff to the district and started our week-long orientation. So their day began meeting here at the high school where we welcomed them. They were given their laptops and technology so they could use them throughout the week. And then they spent a couple of hours at the building um, with the building administration, kind of getting the ins and outs of their building. They came back and joined us at about 11.15, and we went over the district mission, um, what our plan is, how it was developed, and then spent time introducing the bigger departments and what everyone is responsible for. We also ran out twice to look at the eclipse, um, based on their request, but safely. Um, <laughs> 2 o'clock, we had to go out, and 2.45. Um, and they were very good at reminding me because, as Deb knows, I'm not the best with breaks and remembering them. So they were right on it. Um, today, we started um, the first day of Capturing Kids Heart. So that will be today, tomorrow, and on Thursday. And joining our new group were some current employees of this district that still needed to be trained. So we have about 40 folks um, that are being trained, and the first day went very, very well. On Thursday, we end at 1 o'clock with Capturing Kids Hearts, and then we have our new teachers who need to participate in the team, the initial training for teachers, meet with our master mentor teacher in the district so that they are all set up with their passwords, understand what they need to do in terms of their modules for the year, so they are set to go in that area. Then on Friday, they spend from 8 to 12.30 learning how to use PowerSchool if they don't know how to, Power Teacher, and then we um, train them and help them develop their teacher website. So our goal really at the end of the week is that they have all of the systems learned. They had a lesson in ASOP, how to report their absences and get subs, the team, their website, so that when they start on Monday, they don't need to worry about all of these pieces. So as they learn, they're also getting things in place for the start of school. So it's a great group. They have a great sense of humor, and uh, it's been a fun week to date. It's rare that you get an eclipse during orientation. <laughs> uh, convocation is when, and do you expect all of us to be there? Uh, it's or are we even invited? Yes, you're all invited. We, <laughs> yeah. You're always invited to everything, and I just don't have a date. Right? September 11th. September 11th. Appropriate. We'll do some and recognition. The, the it time will be in the afternoon. Okay. Afternoon. Oh. It's normally been in the afternoon, yeah. the convocation. Okay. Um, we do professional development. We do okay. a professional development in the no at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Thinking of old days. Okay. And I think the tradition started last year, the year before my continuum, but no pressure on my <laughs> colleague, Jean. <laughs> no <pressure. laughs> When she finds out what the tradition is, you never know. Uh, Mrs. Meerman. Hello. Um, I just thought I would give you some brief uh, summer updates um, and just in terms of some of the work that my office has been working on. As you know, we did um, do our ESY programming this year. Um, went fairly smooth. It's always, there's always a little hiccups here and there, like buses on the first day were late. But, you know, for the most part, it worked out very well. Um, some of the other summer work that I've really been doing is actually going to connect with some public school programming that has been made available for some of our students that currently we actually use out of district um, 
special ed private approved programs for because I wanted to see if there would be public school options that we could utilize. So I looked at Manchester Regional Academy and there was a program available in Glastonbury and then I also looked at Simsbury just to be able to come a little more familiar with some of the better options that we may want to consider for some of our students. The other thing that I spent time this summer doing is um, putting the finishing touches on the procedural manual. As you know, I finished up with the stakeholder group for that. Um, my goal is to have our board attorney review it very quickly and then be able to roll that out with staff this year. So I've already talked to the principals about a training plan where um, Tiffany and I are actually going to go work with individual departments um, as opposed to piling everyone in a room for a six hour, memorize all this. I'd rather spread it out through the year and really work with people in depth. The other thing is that um, we, ha as you are aware, we have uh, instituted new stipend positions, two for assistive technology and one for transition coordinator. So I'm in the process of um, selecting those individuals who will help us move those agenda items forward. I'm really excited about that because those positions will really help us with leveraging building capacity, coordination, helping individuals actually begin to build our system so that we're doing a better job and making decisions around transition planning as well as assistive technology support. Can you say those positions again for me, sir? Sure thing. Um, we had two posted positions for assistive technology coordinators. Okay. But they were stipend yeah. positions, yep. Yep. one for elementary, one for high school, and there was a stipend position for a transition coordinator here at the high school. Thank you. Um, and then I was going to do a, just a quick update on where we're at with the student support model. As you know, I, we, Donna and I did a rollout um, this past May, I believe it was, in that board, where we shared with you our work. Just wanted to pick up where we had left off from that meeting. Um, we met with small groups on uh, this uh, last day of June, June 21st, where actually it was a couple of days, yeah, and um, they really got to work rolling up their sleeves, developing curriculum for those additional new courses that we were trying to implement. So as you know, we put in three reading courses, um, a writing course, and two math courses. What they really did was they took the general education curriculum that's already in place and really kind of pulled together those standards and those instructional components that we needed to hyper-focus on for those courses. So it's not new curriculum per se, it's just taking what we have and consolidating it to a much higher hyper-focused for that instruction. Um, so those groups were really excited, they're ready to go in terms of implementing all of that. The other thing that occurred is um, through my IDA grant funds, I was able to secure um, a year-long professional development for co-teaching. And uh, that actually got kicked off on June 21st, where general education and special education teachers came to a training where it was really the basics of what is co-teaching. And the consultant that we contracted with will come back throughout the year this year to really work with them. Um, on coaching and feedback and help meet with them in terms of their co-planning time, how do they co-plan together, and whatever other types of follow-up they might need either as a group or as individual teams. So he'll be prepared to work with them on that. That's pretty much my update. Okay. Um, <coughs> questions? I do have questions. I'm not sure if my concerns might be better suited under board comments. Well, why, why don't we... Because uh, I don't want to put Kim in a position if this isn't your purview. Just tell me. This is not well, your purview. <laughs> well, uh, one question that, that I had heard, I'll just ask, is, is they want to make sure that the assistant centers were manned. Uh, and can you comment on that? Can you update us on that? I'll take that one. All of our, um, we looked at the tutors and TAs. We are able to recall all of the tutors. We did that today, and our teaching assistants we will not be filling until the state budget is finalized and the grant funds stabilize. Okay. So all tutors have been called back, which includes the Student Assistance Center, and our TAs are on hold for now. Okay. They were put in the mail this morning because I have to stop. Right. That's the first thing I did. Okay. Further questions? Should we discuss the family engagement specialist? If, if you'd like to, uh, there was a discussion about mm -hmm. um, allocating responsibilities that had been um, originally part of the purview of the family engagement specialist. 
and that was going to be put off on the, the buildings and there was a talk about whether that should be a stipend or not mm -hmm. and you were figuring out who would take care of that. Can you give us an update on that? Yes, sure. I'm actually more prepared to provide an update in September as you had asked me from the last meeting, partly because our plan was to work with CPDC and really talk through what it is that each building needed to do. So I don't really have an update until we can really sit and organize what we're going to be doing with CPDC, but I will be prepared to do that. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Do we have somebody who's doing what she was doing um, in that position? I know they were, I was in many meetings where she was relating to certain groups of kids that seemed to, uh, to really count on that support and that relationship. Um, I know that she had relationships specifically with um, uh, non-resident students uh, and I think some mother's groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. Who is, do we have somebody filling those gaps for the beginning of the school year? Um, let me, let me, there's a short answer and a long answer to that question. The short answer is not really designated personnel per those particular items that you rattled off. However, as I mentioned at our last uh, meeting, um, I am working in strong collaboration with Carol Kirkin and CREC uh, has um, ha also hired a family engagement specialist. So we are working through all the details and resources that we could be using and bringing back in here to this district to support those students. So we're in play at the moment to kind of pick up a lot of those pieces, but in collaboration with CREC. And if I could just add on to that, our students that are new to the district, um, my administrative assistant, the minute they're accepted in the lottery is reaching out, calling the families, welcoming them to Avon, telling them what they do need to do to register. We're meeting the families when they come in, and most of our families come in as pre-Ks, and in the spring, we did an open house, and many of the families have come and made connections with the teachers and folk and the principal. So we're kind of coming at it at multiple angles at the moment. Mrs. Young. So I, I'm understanding that you would like more time to figure out building by building what might be needed. Does that mean that between now and September, the I think it's over $100,000 in the line item um, that is was designated for a family engagement specialist. I don't remember the exact number. Will those funds then still be available to hire somebody to fill that role in whatever capacity is deemed necessary? Does, does anyone on the I mean, Well, I guess I'm going to I'm going to do a answer that most lawyers uh, give. It depends. It depends on our enrollment, uh, but obviously, if if it is the desire of this board to fund that position. It's the administration's responsibility to make that happen. It's that simple. Um, obviously, you know, we've already added a kindergarten teacher for enrollment, and I don't anticipate adding any more teachers because we have a week to go before the opening. Uh, but I think the board has to have the conversation and come to an agreement and then direct the administration to do it. I think that's where we are. Well, and, and also the finance committee handles transfers. So if that money is going to be transferred from that line item to another line item, which could happen, the finance committee would have that notice in the first instance and then it right. comes to the board. And the only reason I say it depends is because the budget is just performing. It's you know, We're just starting the year. So things change. You're gonna, you're, as every year, we see line items that are short and other line items that have um, larger amounts in them. But if the board has a desire to fund the position, you're within your right to direct the administration to do so. And it happens. I, go ahead. I just, I just wanna go on record as saying, I think that I, I know how hard everybody works and I think that everybody's doing the best that they can for, for the students involved, but I think it's really important that I say for myself that Avon is a wonderful place um, for academics and that we really celebrate um, success academically, but I have to, as a board member, also let you know that I really, really believe that social supports are just as imperative and really important, and it is heartbreaking for me. I sat through these meetings on my own committee to see the Friends Group, which was a beautiful group of um, at the high school. They're kind of uh, kids who are trying to learn how to break barriers and make relationships and 
we sat in these meetings with all kinds of different kids with all kinds of fears and dreams and aspirations and they said what they were afraid of and what they were open to and, and I I'm really sad that we are going to miss out on that because I think um, tensions are so high in our country and it probably for all of us in our homes and it was a really meaningful thing to me and I think it was a meaningful thing to those children. So for me, social supports are always going to be as important as our academic success. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Blair. All right. Um, Jay has a comment. A comment too. Oh, sorry, Jay, I didn't see so, your hand. In my opinion on it, as, as one of nine, and I don't know how we're going to decide as a board, is uh, you know, we saw um, a presentation by, by Kim previously that was looking for a social worker. At that point, we did not know that our family engagement specialists would be leaving the district. So I would look towards you and say, you know, I'm going to tell you today to do it, but as you fit into your new model and needing a social worker, I would hope that we have those funds to help cover that position given the transition that we just had. That's the way I look at it. Okay, and I believe that uh, she commented before that they planned around not having a social worker because we didn't originally approve that. but. Uh, obviously, as things change during the course of the year, hopefully administration uh, is feels free enough to be able to have a robust conversation with us as needs change, um, as time requires, and if you need something, and we have to find a way to do it. And I, I would admonish you not to be shy. All right, Mrs. Young. So I think the concern that had been expressed to us at a previous meeting was that there was um, a desire to not have to reposition or move students who are already working with certain staff to other staff. Um, but I think particularly in light of the findings of the Hanover Research Report, perhaps we're going to learn that there are students who have never been identified, who aren't working with anybody, who need support services, particularly at the high school. And I will leave it to those who maybe have not yet read this report to find what they think is significant from it, but I'm hoping that, that this will be incorporated into any um, recommendations that are made to us in September. Thank you. Next items, such other and further business that may be come before the meeting. Hearing none, communications from board members. All right, there are no communications from board members. Committee reports, uh, Mr. Spivak, alternative resources and regional services. Our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 6th at 1 p.m. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Young, audit. The audit committee will uh, work with uh, our director of business, and we will be meeting, I'm sure, sometime soon, but so far there's nothing to meet on. Okay. Mr. Burke, capital budget. Uh, we have not met, but we're looking forward to working with Jean Ann, Heather, and Miles uh, as uh, the process moves forward in the next couple of months. Uh, Mrs. Blaya, uh, Communication School, yes, Climate and our, Culture. Our meeting is on uh, the 28th. It's a time change. It's at 5 p.m. at Central Office, not 5.30 as usual. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, Hanover, hopefully, website update, um, things of that nature. So I'm sorry, 28th. what time is it? 28th? 5 what time? p.m. 5 p.m. And that's? Um, Central Office. Central Office. Thank you very much. Uh, finance, Mr. Spivak. Our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 6th at noon. Thank you. Uh, personnel, Mrs. Rell has just left. Can yeah. someone else report? Sure. Um, we are still currently working with, well, we just be, so we're working with three bargaining units at the moment. We're working with the paras and support staff as well as the secretaries, and we just started um, with the administrators. So those are ongoing negotiations. Got it. Anything else? Heather, is that good? Okay. There you go. Mrs. Zeroli, uh, policy. Oh, sorry. Uh, we will be meeting on Tuesday, August 29th, which is uh, differing from our normal schedule. Uh, we changed it. We usually meet the first Tuesday of every month, but that's an open house night. So um, we'll be meeting and we'll continue to move along. Um, with uh, policies at this point. I'm not aware of anything uh, critical on the legislative front that is requiring a change, but um, we always adjust our agenda 
as need be. Um, so thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, Mrs. Shute, board representative to the Curriculum Professional Development Council. Um, I'm looking forward to our first one of the year. I don't know if you have a date planned yet. October 26th. October 26th. Should be a good day. All right, excellent. Mr. Burke, representative to the Board of Finance. So the Board of Finance is meeting uh, next Monday, the 28th. Okay. 7 o'clock. 7? Yep. They canceled the last They morning. canceled July. Yeah. So I did see the agenda come out today, and they did say that they're going to be open discussing our request for the 1%. Yeah. Okay, yes. the one percent that you've been working on for years. All right. Next item would be Mrs. Rell, representative to the town council. Uh, she's not here. Can anyone else report? I actually attended the last meeting, Houston, on July twenty seventh. So I gave the highlights of the town council, which at the time I felt were our search for an interim superintendent. Thank you. That is over and we're done. <laughs> Had an excellent person <laughs> in place. Um, gave them a little bit of an update about the process of getting our new superintendent in place permanently. I did bring up the fact that uh, a number of us had attended the prior Board of Finance meeting on June 26 to discuss the establishment of the, the fund that's been talked about for years, it sounds like. So the council was uh, interested to hear about that and seemed to acknowledge the fact that it was uh, kind of an outstanding issue that had been floating around for some time. And uh, I gave them an update of the enrollment estimate at the time, which everybody in the room seemed to correctly predict would go up. So that was the, the highlights of that meeting. And you'll notice that I do include uh, now all the enrollment uh, reports, summaries that go to you. I send to the town manager, the chair of the town council, and the chair of the board of finance. Because they always ask that yeah. question. Yep. Okay, Mrs. Blea, um, Capital Region Educational Council. We've had the summer off. Oof. I know. It's been Isn't that nice? nice. Um, They're kicking off uh, lots of new openings, and our next meeting is September to kick off the year. Do you have a date in September? I don't. Okay, but September. Okay. Uh, our next meeting is Tuesday the 19th. I don't know why we stuck that in particular on the item. I'm not sure if that's a change. Let me take a look. No, nope, that's, oh, no. that's the standard. Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Yep. Um, communications from the public. All right. Hearing none. Uh, can we go? Can I have a motion? Well, can, sorry. Can we say that we go into executive committee by consent at 8.03? So moved. And you're inviting in your central leadership team. Yes, and we're inviting in the central leadership team. All right, carries unanimously. 